It's an enormous and very rare privilege to have lived in the days of good government. Across nations and centuries, few people have ever done so. By a rare bit of luck, certain groups in a few corners of the globe tasted decades of this remarkable, anomalous blessing. They might, foolishly, especially if they travelled little, seldom read history books, or had a very high estimation of their own populations, they might even have started to assume it was a natural or God-given norm. Yet the default state of almost all nations is quite other. It is authoritarianism, bullying, demagoguery, corruption, monopoly, racial segregation and state-sponsored aggression and murder. We will not now, it seems, be living in dramatically unusual times. It was the years before that will be remembered as unusual, a daring bet against the facts of our nature. We aren't sliding into a new age of darkness, we are reverting to a mean. Civilization was always simply an unlikely concept. Those who are afraid are typically reassured by optimism. All will eventually be well, the kindly tell them. But we need stiffer, darker counsel. We should explore not what might ideally happen, which leaves us oscillating painfully between hope and despair, but what will happen if the worst comes to pass. We need to make ourselves entirely at home with catastrophe, looking at it squarely in the eye, so as not to keep catching glimpses of it here and there, and so taking fright anew every time. We stand to see that whatever comes to pass will, in a desperately reduced and pitiful form, still be survivable. A home could be built among the ruins. There might be some sort of life to be led, despite everything. Nothing is ever properly unbearable not least because we always retain access to the best escape route. The Stoic philosophers of ancient Rome, those poor souls, agitated beyond compare by the antics of their hysterical, thin-skinned, murderous emperors, were known to calm themselves down by holding up their veins to the light and calling out, freedom, knowing it could, if it came to that, all be over in minutes. We shouldn't be surprised by our fellow citizens. This is what the human animal is really like. Very sweet at points from close up, usually generous to small children and the elderly, hard-working, but highly prone to delusion, tribal, offended by strangers, uninclined to rational analysis, and with a fondness for slaughter and reckless messianic plans. The elite, routinely derided as out of touch, and not so on the basis of forgetting how much milk or the rent costs, rather on the basis of forgetting how dark and broken human nature really is. There's a natural longing to do something quickly and angrily. There's an equal longing to give up and hide the counsel of quietism. Neither feels quite right, neither endurance nor explosion. The only true avenue is to commit ourselves to years of careful, adroit plotting to bring about a renewal of that now ever more implausible dream, a land governed for a little while longer by a spirit as fragile as crystal of wisdom and tolerance. <laughs>